Gus Van Sant has burdened us with a remake of Hitchcock's groundbreaking classic, Psycho. It's 2019 and Jon Favreau has blessed us with a remake of a timeless classic, The Lion King. Opening on a scantily clad Marion Crane was a big fuck you to conservative audiences. Opening on that sunrise proved cartoons could maybe one day mimic nature's beauty. Killing her halfway through was an even bigger fuck you to narrative expectations. Killing Mufasa early also proved a medium primarily used for exaggerated comedy could delve into darkness. Every twist and turn in Psycho was a stab at unoriginality. Lion King was all about innovating. The idea of a shot-for-shot -shot remake is revolting. To do a shot-for-shot -shot remake is brilliant, especially with Favreau in the director's chair. He just did The Jungle Book. Van Sant had just pushed cinema forward with Goodwill Hunting. The star was a script. Son of a bitch. He stole my life. But without Van Sant there to make choices such as this. I ask you about love. Probably quote me a sonnet. Keep the camera moving until Will's in the shot as a way to visually communicate he's listening. You've never looked at a woman and been totally vulnerable. Really listening. I've known someone that could level you with her eyes. Without those choices, Goodwill Hunting wouldn't have been Oscar worthy. I just said to Matt, losing would suck and winning would be really scary, and it's really, really scary. The star of The Jungle Book was the realism, but without Favreau and the Disney machine making sure nobody strayed too far from the original, Forget about your worries and your stress. the film wouldn't have had the warmth childhood teddy bears and other artifacts from one's past have. It's disappointing to see a director capable of the subtle but impactful choices made in Goodwill Hunting, ditch invention and regress into a remake. It's inspiring to see a director with access to such radical technology refrain from letting it muddy up the soul of our childhood films. However, not all agree with this sentiment. I'm sure Van Sant has his reasons for remaking Psycho. We the Beatles. These guys ascending as much as they did had a lot to do with the time they spent performing covers. <laughs> Learning the ins and outs of proven pop songs only made their originals stronger. Learning the ins and outs of a proven horror movie like Psycho might have the same effect on Van Sant, but you don't release your cover of Psycho to the public. Boo, you, stink! you screen it for your Cinema 101 class. Critics have grown weary of the spike in remakes and sequels, and I get it. Radiohead ascended from stars to legends when they let technological advancements govern their songwriting. Ditching the past and getting weird made them pioneers of sound Step still being bush. explored today. Your tongue. Uh. Ditching the past might have had the same effect on Favreau, but you don't ditch perfection. You praise it by repeating it. Along with defending the benefits of learning the ins and outs of Psycho, Van Sam might also say he was able to do what Hitchcock himself was barred from doing. The color in Rear Window alone makes one wonder what Hitchcock might have done with red in the shower scene. But 1960s censors barely permitted the scene in black and white, thanks to a growth in gore attraction. <laughs> particularly in horror movies, Van Sant was able to unveil the full extent of Psycho's gruesomeness. Those same wary critics might also say Favreau is doing nothing the original creators didn't already do, but that's not true. As I said earlier, the original Lion King's opening showed animation could maybe one day mimic nature's beauty. Favreau proved the prediction correct by making a photorealistic Lion King. However, in fulfilling Hitchcock's vision, Van Sant ignored the director's cry cinematic revolution. Favreau's photorealism helped fulfill Disney's original vision, and it did so without ravaging the bones. Aside from the color, cast, and audible faps, the film is a needless copy of a classic we all already have a copy of at home. Aside from the image, cast, and a couple songs, the film is a much needed update of a classic. Having earned only half of its $60 million budget back, the movie has failed. It is succeeding, and Leasing films like, like it can expect, can expect to succeed too, because, because yes, nostalgia is something nice. Something new is nice. But nothing beats being, but nothing beats being cradled in the arms of nostalgia.